There we go. So you guys start with your start with your graham crackers. You're gonna go ahead and, and crush them all the way up. You want them really, really, really fine. Um, and this is something that you guys can do. It'll last throughout the whole entire week. If you wanna supplement the cream cheese, if you guys um, have anything like lactose or things like that, I can send you other recipes. Um, if you want a gluten-free crust, whatever you want, you wanna do the almond crust for it, I, I can send you all of that. If you guys just send, send me a message or um, send me a message or send me an, an email, I can show you pretty much every type of substitution. If you're not a baker, I have an amazing no-bake cheesecake recipe that is very, very, very easy for you as well. Um, but definitely, so just, just send me that. Um, so you guys should already have your graham crackers kind of separated. Uh, butter should be at room temp as well, so it'll be nice and easy for you guys to go ahead and add the butter to it. The confectioner's sugar to it is is optional. It just depends on how you want how you want your crust. If you want more of the graham cracker taste to the crust, then don't do that. If you're looking more of like a vanilla wafer cookie taste, then add the confectioner's sugar to the graham cracker. And while we're go ahead and crushing up these graham crackers, you guys let us know or let me know any questions you have, um, any challenges you you think about with baking, um, or just any general questions you have. Period. Hey Dennis. Hey. Um, I um I got two packages of cream cheese, but unfortunately uh, needed some on some bagels, so I'm a little short on cream cheese. Is there a substitute or something that can are you, are you using the, the nine inch uh, pan? Yeah. Oh, then you'll be okay. Cause it, it's gonna rise really, really full. So that's okay. Cool, cool. Good to know. I did the same thing before you guys joined the session. See, <laughs> I did the same thing, so don't worry. You're just gonna, going to want to make sure that it's, uh, one, when we get to mixing Terry, that it's really, really creamy. There's no lumps at all. That'll help it rise. Okay, good deal. And this recipe, you guys, is really easy. Usually my cheesecakes are done in a water bath. This one you don't have to do in a water bath. It is what, what we call the no-fail um, no fail cheesecakes um, of all the, hold on, I'm reading Joan's message. I'm going to read it. <laughs> Needing my baking skills. Well, if you guys have ever been to any of our flex days, any of our holiday parties and had some of those cakes, those were all my cakes. Um, Oh, yeah, I can tell you, day. the benefit of having Dennis on this committee is I've had like multiple of his desserts. <laughs> They've all been great. So but you guys have probably had them and just just really didn't know. Um, but yeah, norm, usually I, I do a lot of the big events at SMC, cupcakes, cookies, um, cheesecakes. Yeah, so there you, you really see that. Um, so you probably didn't know, but we, we, they sometimes do this really big giveaway, and I did that really big spread of about 40 different types of bunt cakes that we gave away that one year. Those are all the cakes that came um, from here, Carolina. Yeah, the triple chocolate brownie. That is definitely a go-to. Um, hi, Dennis. I have a question. Hey. What's the purpose of a water bath? Well, when, you, when you're doing, say if I'm doing a like a, a, a real creamy textured cheesecake, like I want to do a banana pudding cheesecake or a pecan cheesecake, you know that the lower level is going to cook faster than the above. So you don't want a real crumbly dry cheesecake. So the water bath will really, really help keep the entire thing moist and kind of help it cook very, very, very evenly and help it so that your cheesecake doesn't crack. Okay, I, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, I used to uh, when I used to cheat when my uh, when my grandmother taught me how to do cheesecakes. I would bake them, but I would only bake the specialty kinds because I knew like vanilla wafers or whipped cream or something would go over and cover the top, so I'd be cool and good. But she she'd know that it she'd know that that I did that. Are you guys? Uh, let's see, Lisa, Terry, you guys are you guys all crumbled up? Have you melted your butter? Yes, butter's melted. You guys are mixing. 
Yes. Okay. So as soon as you guys have that done, we're going, I'm using the spring form pan, but I know you guys are using the nine inch. Make sure that you put it all over the bottom and you do want it to rise above. So don't just get it on the bottom. You do want it to rise above. Hey, Dennis, while you're going, Denise had a question about, does your family still own the bakery? No. So we, it was a, a, a very, very, it was a really good bakery, but no, my grandparents, when they passed, my grandmother passed that we closed the bakery. I took it over um, and started baking from started baking from home because uh, about three days before her memorial service, we had all these clients saying, "Hey, we you know we're offering our condolences, but I still need my wedding cake and I, I still need my birthday cake." So of course, <laughs> me being the oldest uh, nephew, oldest grandson, oldest everything in the family, I immediately took on the orders, and ever since then, I have still had all of her clients. So no, they don't. And I was in the process of opening up a, a bakery spot right where the new Ram Stadium is, but COVID hit. I was going to be in that new strip mall right there, but COVID hit. And so that kind of pushed my plans back a little bit. I, will, I would love to have a coffee spot and small bakery and name it Lucille's. My grandmother uh, name is Lucille, so I would love to name it Lucille's, the name it after her. So I'm still going to do it, but it's just... The pandemic kind of pushed us back a little bit with that. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that, Dennis. Um, I wish you the best of luck, and I want to come visit Lucille's whenever it's uh, up and running. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. That's awesome. I'm going to melt my butter, and then I'm going to catch up with you guys. Dennis, um, someone asked, do you have a website or if they want to place an order, how do they get a hold of you? Yep, yep, yep. Usually you guys can message me. I am really bad with the website. Um, text messages usually work best. Um, the Instagram works best because my sister kind of manages that. So she kind of really uh, takes over that, but that usually works best. Or email or, or text or drop by my office and push your under your order underneath my door, which is what a lot of SMC folks do. <laughs> so either way. Terry, Lisa, whoever else is baking with me. Um, uh, Dennis, and, what's your Instagram? It is Biddle's Event Services and Bakery. I'll see if I can maybe. Aaron, if I, oh, you can maybe. Yeah, I can drop it in the chat. I just want okay. to make sure I get the, get it correct. Oh yeah, because it'll pull that link. Yeah. What else is there? Are you guys ready to move on to the cream cheese, Lisa and Terry? Oh, that's yeah. perfect. That is perfect. Lisa, you baked before, huh? You, you, you've you baked, huh? Okay, I was going to say, because that, that <laughs> I see I see the pirate glitch, I see the glass glitch. Terry, where are you guys at? Are you guys ready for cream cheese? Yep, ready for cream cheese. Okay, so go ahead and add your cream cheese into your mixing bowl first, and then your sugar. I want you guys to cream the cream cheese and the sugar first, and then I want you to taste it, okay? So start off with just the two-thirds cup of sugar, and you can use coconut sugar. You can also use uh, golden brown sugar, just depends on what you what you like. Um, you can use some stevia, some sweet and low. Um, my grandmother always just told me uh, bacon's supposed to make you happy, not fit. So I'm gonna do the recipe the way she the way she taught me. Um, but start with your with your cream cheese in there, and then go ahead and mix it. Don't mix it really fast because you don't want to introduce any air. Okay, that's what will really cause it to break. But don't mix any air to it. But start with both packs of cream cheese. And the sugar, don't add the vanilla or the eggs until the end. I hear some mixers going. Dennis, can you repeat the Instagram? I realize I'm one of those people that just messages you. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Bill's Event Services. Let me see if I can get it too good.
Did I send it to you, Aaron? So you guys forgive me if it's a little loud. I'm gonna start mixing too. Okay, Terry and Lisa, I don't know if Estella's in here. Is Estella in here? I know she was gonna bake. She's going to be baking, I don't think so. I don't think she's in here. I think she, she's helping out with another workshop. Gotcha, okay. Let's see where you guys are. Lisa, where are you? I have added my sugar to my cream cheese and I haven't added my eggs or my vanilla yet. Okay, so have you have you tried it? Go ahead and take a little taste of it. Mm, it's good. It's not super sweet. Okay, and is that the way you want it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, then go ahead and add the vanilla. Uh, maybe mix it for about a minute or so and then taste it again. Are you using clear vanilla or... Or no? Uh, I'm using um, the um, Trader Joe's. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Terry, what about you? Um, pure vanilla. Gotcha. Okay. So go ahead and add that. I'm going to add some to mine. And then you want to mix again and taste. And for those of you not baking, were you guys able to, to get onto the Instagram and see some of the photos and things like that? Yes, the cakes look beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, they're awesome. I'm, I'm really, I, the my fellow members on the Classified Professional Development Committee will tell you I'm really hard on myself. Sometimes I'll send them cakes and they're like, Dennis. I'm like, I can't do this. I have to start over from scratch. So like, why are you starting over from scratch? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm really judgmental on myself. I have a, I have a baker I'm, friend who feels the same way. So maybe it's just a baker quality. Maybe it's probably, like a thing. Probably. <laughs> she has the same struggles. <laughs> Okay, Dennis, I added my vanilla and it's um, delicious and perfect. Just a, um, just a tinge of sweetness to it, which is perfect for me. I don't like super sweet cheesecake. Dennis, you're on mute. Thank you. See, I was, I was getting down. Um, I said, I'm the exact same way, Lisa. I don't like uh, it really, really sweet um, either, but that's why the recipe just said, a lot of people messaged me and said, just two thirds cup. I was like, well, that's, it's perfect. You know, for me, I, I'm not a real sweet person. Um, what you guys could do, those of you that are not baking, but those of you that are baking, you could do, um, right now you could throw in some lemon zest, 
um, or if you wanted to do like almond extract or lemon extract, but if you really do the lemon zest, it makes it really nice and light um, as well. Or if you do like a splash of lemon juice in there, it'll really change the texture and the flavor. If you were doing, um, if you're doing like a key lime cheesecake, this is where you would take some of that lime zest in there and just fold it in. Don't mix it in, but fold it in really, really well. And it, beca it'll beca it becomes really, really well. That's why I told you guys, this is the base. So if you can get this part down, you can go on and make any type of cheesecake. You can go to your banana pudding cheesecake. You would then just get some instant pudding and either mix it with um, oat milk, almond milk, soy milk, you know, regular milk, whichever type of milk you guys use, and just go ahead and mix that up and you would just spoon it in in little dollops. But you would swirl it through and be very careful to not bother or, or interrupt your crust. And once you guys do that, then you come out and layer the top and kind of go from there. I'll show you guys the one I did. Nor my family, they probably destroyed it. They did destroy it. So I'm not gonna put that out, but I'll cut a slice. My, my son has a habit when he wants a uh, dessert, he goes right to the middle and he, <laughs> he claims it. So that's exactly what he did, but I'll show you guys a slice. Right now, kind of fixed this because I'm not sure if you guys can see. Oh, yeah, you can. So I have to fix the piece that he took, but it, there you go. So this is just the one I did yesterday. And you see, I just threw some strawberries on top. There is some strawberries inside the mix. And the crust is really, really flaky because there's some almond in here. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah, perfect. Dennis, Teresa wants to know, um, have you ever tried making your own vanilla? I have, and I, I suck at it. <laughs> I have, I have. Let's see where you guys are. You guys are, are you guys ready to layer your cheesecake mix in? Terry, where are you at right now? Uh, vanilla's in and waiting on eggs. Gotcha. Okay, start your egg. So if as long as you've tasted it and it's right where you want, once you add those eggs in, it's just going to taste however it is if you didn't taste it. So make sure you taste the mix right now. Yep. Um, yep. Take a, move it around in your mixing bowl. You want to make sure there's no lumps in it at all. You want to make sure that it's very, very, very smooth. I see some of my team members are telling me to bring slices to work tomorrow. <laughs> you guys should be baking right along with me. <laughs> okay, let me get caught up, you guys, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like before I put my cheesecake mixture in. Hey, Dennis, can you hear me? Probably not.
Hey, Dennis, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, Brian wants to know how high is the mixer set? So, well, I have an industrial one, but the go, go with the first notch, so it should be at two. You want it to go really low. You don't want to rush the, the cream cheese mixture at all. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to rush it. You want it to take its time, almost as if it's just folding in. I don't know if you can see. My camera's not the best, but if you can see the layer there, you see how it's really fine and smooth. My camera's not the best, guys. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Like with no holes, no imperfections. That's really kind of how you want it to be. And you can always um, increase the speed. So you want to start off slow. Um, but if the cream cheese is at room temp. And all and your eggs wrap room temp, then you'll be really good. It'll go, it'll flow really smoothly. Really want it. Then Alan said he'd be uh, baking with you, but he's enjoying lunch and it's too hot to turn on the oven <laughs> in his apartment. The the air is is like blasting and and, and it's still really hot. I said <laughs> I better eat a salad if I'm gonna sit here watching baking <laughs> before I do something bad. <laughs> So you really want it to, let's see, Denise, Terry, you guys, it should really look almost like, I don't want to say, almost like a cream, like a face cream. Um, exactly, exactly. So that we ours is exactly the same. So you really want to look like a, a, a real, like really thin face cream, a little bit thinner than custard. Terry, how you doing? Lori wants to know which. Lori wants to know which attachment do you use on your uh, KitchenAid stand mixer. I have about nine. Just a standard whisk. If it's at room temp, do the do the whisk. I mean, I have ones that have I have a whisk that has the sides to it that scrapes the bowl. But for this, I just used the standard whisk. The cream cheese was really soft and it, it, just, it just creamed really well. Lisa, did you use a, a KitchenAid mixer or a stand-up mixer? Yeah, I use my KitchenAid and I use the whisk. Okay, same. Terry, are you using a hand mixer or stand-up? Um, the stand-up. Uh, the stand-up. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want you guys to to take to put too much um, too much thought. Don't don't be afraid to to tackle this cheesecake at all. It is really simple and really easy. And I'm not just saying that because <laughs> because I bake a lot. Um, but it's it's really simple, really easy. I know for those of you who did the brownies with me last time, you guys enjoyed that. But really simple, really easy. It'll hold up in the fridge for a couple of days. Um, something really simple during the holidays that if you want to give away as gifts and take to different places because you can experiment with the crust. You can either do it really healthy, not a fan of healthy cheesecake, uh, <laughs> not, a fan of, not a fan of healthy cheesecake. But I, this is what I start with. I do a lot of cheesecake cakes. So I, I know a lot of you guys are familiar with the Cheesecake Factory, but my celebration cheesecake is, is 10 times better. Uh, <laughs> it's 10 times better because you, you, you get the cake that I make along with the cheesecake. And it's a layer of cake and cheesecake, just about six layers high. And so it makes a really nice slice. I do that in a uh, pecan cheesecake. I do that in a peach cobbler uh, cake cheesecake. I do it in a pumpkin uh, cream cheese. So I, I mean, so it's hopefully we get to have some, some fun when the holidays come this year. You're killing me, Dennis. <laughs> you guys should. You guys should. Try oh my gosh, that sounds so good. <laughs> so there is this uh, walnut pecan cookie. I also do a beignet cheesecake cake that is to die for. Now, if if you know anything about beignets, right? They're really tough, and you have to fry them. But I do it. It is so. It is really, really good. That's probably my favorite one. Um, if you're a fan of powdered sugar, but I stuff them sometimes. Sometimes I'll do like peaches and cream. I'll stuff the beignet or I'll do like a peach cobbler empanada. 
a triple chocolate brownie empanada or you know it's it's and those are those are those things that are really 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 easy you just have to be good with your hands to get the to get the dough um let's say robert how do i layer my cheesecake cake so i bake it i use these spring form pans here if i'm going to do them with the cake because then they just pop open and the cheesecake will just come right out the bottom and then i can just slice it Right, and then I'll just layer it right with the cakes. And so it'll be right there. I do ice cream cakes. Um, I do frozen yogurt cakes. So it's just pretty much some of, some of everything, but the cheesecakes are, are probably the easiest. I'm gonna get this set back up and then we can, we can get it started, guys. If you guys keep, Aaron, if you could just call out any questions or yep. feedback they have. Yep. I'm gonna put myself on mute, but I'll come back out once I get it. Uh, someone's <laughs> beignet so bad, beignets to die for. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna catch up. And then um, Lisa and Terry, you guys hold before you pour your mixture in, if you have it already. Yeah. Okay. Don't judge me if I have cheesecake for dinner. I promise I won't. <laughs> It'll go really good with your morning coffee. While, while I'm catching up, I know there's a lot of you in here that have either personally ordered or have tried something that I, I have baked or made or have ordered. I wanna hear some feedback. Good, bad, cake was dry. If the cake was dry, I, I, very, I very much well may cry because my grandmother did not believe in any dry cake at all. <laughs> um, but I, I wanna hear some feedback. I know Don and uh, there's a couple of folks in here that have had or have personally ordered or have tried some of the cakes or cookies. I see Michael Hudson in here. You guys just, just shoot some feedback out. Dennis, I'm on the fence. I think you're gonna have to bring some more into the office and let me try some more. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a personal invitation as well. I, I can tell you, Dennis, I have not had food as good as yours and my mom and wife were probably the best cooks, but <laughs> they can't compete, buddy. <laughs> Michael, this is me. I just want you to know. Who's that? Terry, so when, when Dennis brings some stuff over, call me. I, 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 definitely, I definitely will. I, I, will drop, I will drop some stuff back. I don't know if you guys went to the baby shower that was at HR. I think it was for one of the staff members that I did her. I did that cake. Remember, when was that? Alan, when was that? Was that last year? I don't think it must have been like before the pandemic because now okay. we don't get to do that. But oh, you've brought, I think even Sherry or Trishana bought stuff for the staff. Yep. From you. Yep. And the cakes never, or the breads, whatever. I mean, they're so good. I hate to call them breads because they're like cakes. <laughs> but they don't make it to out of the office. I eat it before I even leave the day yeah nothing makes its way home <laughs> <laughs> yeah what i in, in our office one of the managers i don't know if jose's here terry i don't see his name but jose usually orders um he loves banana bread so i do this protein banana bread for him with banana protein powder and egg whites and so he doesn't feel bad with it and sometimes he'll look and he's like you're tricking me you're really trying. Like, I'm, I'm really not tricking you uh but I, sometimes i'll do that for him so there's there's Really, really, really healthy recipes. If you guys love sweets or know someone that loves sweets, send it to me. 
I am very sure I just turned my grandmother's um, her all of her old index cards. Some of those index cards had grease stains and who knows what on them from her little. I just turned it into a digital recipe book and I gave it out to no one. <laughs> I just kept it for myself. I didn't give it to anyone. I feel like I'm the one that took over the business. I am the one who was there when I was younger. No, I'm just I gave it out to everyone for Christmas gifts last year. And I ship cookies. I ship cakes. Um, I, I do ship cakes. Uh, I ship cookies. Yeah. So if you guys are, if you know someone that, um, yeah, see, uh, Felicia has had some of my sugar-free cakes um, that come through. I do this sugar-free um, buttercream that's really, really light. Sometimes I'll do a, an Italian buttercream, which gives a real good crust. I'm on it. Sometimes I know most of the folks in HR, I usually, when I bring them by, I don't put any icing or anything on it because you don't need it. Um, I think you did a German chocolate one time. Yep. So yep. I had like the Coke. That was, I was going to say, that was really good. Yes. That glaze or whatever, coconut glaze that was mm -hmm. on there. Dennis Robert wants to know if you have a keto crust recipe. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Don, the strawberry lemonade cake. I mean, my, Don, you have to try the blueberry lemonade. Strawberry lemonade is a favorite of mine, but you have to try the blueberry lemonade. I, I promise you, you will never order strawberry lemonade. Well, you may, because strawberry lemonade is really good. But if you try the blueberry lemonade, I promise you, you, that'll probably switch you to, that'll probably be your new favorite. You know I'm the sweets queen, Dennis. Don't be <laughs> <me>, please. <laughs> <laughs> if you try the, try the blueberry lemonade, yeah. Oh goodness, I'll be texting you. <laughs> <laughs> I do these, I do these cheesecake stuffed apples as well as you guys, where I would I core out the center of an apple and I'll stuff it with cheesecake and then I'll dip it in chocolate. Um, I'll dip it in caramel and then I'll dip it in chocolate so they're double dipped. Um, and I can show, yeah, it's it's really, really, really easy. I don't mind uh, showing or talking, but if you guys know someone that loves sweets, um, and if you guys know someone that loves sweets, like my grandfather, um, my grandmother passed recently, but my grandfather loves sweets. They would get up every morning and have sweets with their coffee. And so I, now that he's 90, so I, he gets upset with me, but I give him these sugar-free cakes and sugar-free loaves and he doesn't know the difference. He doesn't know that. He's like, oh, this is just like your grandma. I was like, yeah, it's just like a recipe, even though it's not. But, <laughs> and sometimes I'll give him the protein um, loaves and he doesn't know the difference. So if you know someone that really loves sweets or kids that really love sweets, um, I guarantee you, I'll send you a recipe and send you something over where you can make their cake. I have them make it with you and they will devour it and never know. They will never know. Okay, I know I didn't done, I didn't done a lot of talking, so I wanna catch up with Lisa and Terry. You guys ready to pour your cheesecake mixture in? Okay, oven's already yep. uh, preset. So if your if your pie dish is not on the cookie sheet, put it on the cookie sheet first before you take it and pop it. And put it on the cookie sheet first. And so the cookie sheet, this is an old school old paper one. But you see how it has this lip to it. This is where you would just fill the water if you were going to do a water bath. But this is but you don't we don't have to with this with this recipe. So it should just go right in the center. Um, and then just begin to pour your cheesecake mixture, pour it right in the center and let it kind of just fill out and then you'll smooth it as it gets a little closer. It gets a little bit more fuller actually, sorry. So Dennis, can you just um, maybe reiterate to some people who may be wanting to place an order now that you've given them all the examples of what you got, <laughs> uh, best way to get in contact with you? So best way, if you, if you send a direct message to the Instagram or it'll connect you, there is a contact me feature that will pull up the business cell phone. You can text that number, um, leave a message at that number um, and, and anything like that. But if it's just for a simple cake mixture, simple email, if you're looking for something like um, our Dean of HR or the VP of HR does where they do like full parties, full tables in the past where I come through and set up backdrops and balloons. I do all that crazy junk, you guys. Backdrops and balloons and, and dessert stands. You guys can see that on the Instagram. Um, 
then that will be that will require a little bit more of a consultation. Um, I do own a lot of rentals. So if you're looking for, of course, not right now with the pandemic, but tables, chairs, plate settings, catering, all those things like that, um, that will require a bit more of a, of a consultation, but definitely feel free to reach out to me in any one of those ways. So Robert wants to know what sugar-free sweetener do you use that doesn't have cooling aftertaste? Coconut. Let me see if I can find it. it usually gets gone. Let me I really love the organic coconut sugar, Robert. Um, but if you must use, uh, you can probably use the stevia. Don't use the equal by itself because that will have a terrible aftertaste. But if you are going to do that, then I would tell you do add some almond extract or you want to add the lemon zest in there. You want to do something else to your cheesecakes or your cakes if you're going to go all full sugar free. And the key to that, to not having that bitter ap aftertaste, and I'll tell you guys, I learned this at a young age, when you bake a cake um, or cookies or cheesecake, everything should be room temp. Never put anything cold into a cake. That will pull all of the moisture out. That was the one thing I learned um, while doing cakes. Um, and if you're going to bake your cakes, you can bake your cakes up to three days in advance. But when, as soon as they come out, right as they chilled and cooled, wrap them up, saran wrap them right, and pop them in the fridge and bake them the next day or bake them an hour later, that saran wrap will pull all of the moisture in there. But do your best to not put anything uh, directly from the fridge into your cake. Do your best to not do it. That was the one thing that I've learned. Um, you can't rush baking. That's why a lot of people will prefer to cook instead of bake because baking is something that you just can't rush. You have to literally set aside time to get it right, but don't, don't do that. Um, Let's see. I'm ready for the oven. Terry, Lisa, you guys ready for the oven? Let's see. Okay, I see Lisa's. Terry, you're going to show yours? That's perfect. Yep. And there's mine, you guys. You see the inside in there. Oh, perfect. You are ready. You're ready. You guys are ready. Okay, let's go ahead and take it and put it uh, in the oven. Uh, do it on the top rack. I suggest to put it on the top rack, not the bottom rack. Um, are you guys, is your oven conventional or? Um, mine has the option to do convection or regular. I just did regular. Okay, same. So I would tell you to yeah, do it regular. Uh, Terry, you good there? I'm regular. Okay, let's go ahead and pop them in. And then you guys can set your timer to about 30 minutes. Once you set it, literally forget it. Pull it out in 30 minutes. The center may look like it's still a little bit shaky, but you wanna pull it out. It did not cook with the water bath. So the cooking time is going to go an additional 10 minutes when you guys pull it out. Just make sure you put it on a cooling rack so it's not like directly on the surface. And let me see if I can cut a piece. Just to show you guys this, I know we're almost done. Any questions, any, any concerns, any feedback? Let me see, maybe you guys can see. You guys see that layer? So it's like, it's really, can you, can you see that well? Or is my camera terrible? Oh, you can see it, okay. So, and I'll just show you. You see how it's really, really, really smooth? It almost has a consistency as if it's a no-bake cheesecake, but it isn't. Um, that's the way you want your cheesecake. It'll come out really nice and light. Um, if you wanted to do something to jazz it up when it comes out, 
Um, sometimes I'll split a cheesecake in four. I'll do fresh strawberries or fresh berries on one side. You can slice some strawberries up with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of lemon zest, and you can put that all over the top. Once it's cooled off and pop that in the fridge, um, you can take some chocolate sauce or some uh, caramel sauce and put that over the top. Um, you can layer some bananas and vanilla wafers um, on the top. You, it really just depends. If you have any type of chocolate candy, you can put that over the top. Um, I, make almond I, I bought some uh, fresh raspberries that I'm mm. going to puree Ooh, yes. and just kind of pour it over the top yep. once it's cool. Yep. And this is a couple questions. So Teresa wants to know, do you make almond macaroons? Um, yes. If so, do you use apricot? Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> and Brian wants to know, what was the temperature setting? 350. 350. 350 if you're going regular, 325 if you're going conventional. I'll give a, a little disclaimer because it's been happening in all our sessions. I think at the 59 mark, I think the Zoom room is scheduled to close. Okay. So I okay. do apologize, um, but I know we'll, we'll be getting out the recipe and the um, ingredients again out to everybody. Yes for the rhubarb, star, strawberry jam, or the glaze. Yes. Yes to that, for, to Lori. Yes. Any other questions or how long do you bake? You bake it for 30 minutes. And then when you bring it out, you put it on a cooling rack for about another 10 minutes. Um, and then you'll, the cheesecake will be, it'll be above the crust, really high above the crust, almost as if it's inflamed. Um, and then it'll cool, it'll cool down very easily um, after you just, just let it sit. So bake it for about 30 minutes and then you can kind of touch the sides of the pan. You'll know once it's cool and then you put it right in the, right in the fridge and serve it the next day or at least after three hours. About 30 minutes is good to go. You won't need it any, any, any longer, uh, any longer than that. 30 minutes, you'll, you'll, be, you'll definitely be good to go. It'll give you just that consistency as I, as I went through and I kind of showed you guys with the slice. Um, and now if, you, if it comes out and you taste it and you notice you don't like the, you don't like the texture or um, you like your cheesecake a little bit more on the thick side, or you want it a little bit thinner, then that's where you can come in and you can add some substitutes and you bring in your heavy whooping cream or your sweetened condensed milk uh, and, and, things, and things like that. I want to keep it really, really, really simple, something that you could do with the family um, or something you can do on Sunday. So, you know, when you come home from work or you're going into work, you can take a little bit of slice with you every day. Um, so you, do, you don't have to take it out of the pan, Brian. You literally from that dish, you can serve it from that dish. Now you can, because if you see the, the one I held up, I popped this one out, but it was after the day. So I just slid it and it comes, it literally comes right out. If you have a spatula, it'll come right out. But you definitely want to make sure it's full, it's fully cooled and it's covered. You can lightly cover with a piece of foil or saran wrap, but you definitely want to make sure that it's covered. Do we have any questions, any feedback? Um, I definitely have a lot of cheesecake. So those are my team members that are at work tomorrow. Will we bring in this in? I am not a sweets person. I do not like sweets. I can make them really well, but I do not, I do not like sweets, except for cookies. I take that back. There's a, there's a chunky cookie recipe that I love. Thanks, Dennis. Oh, no, no, you're welcome. You guys are welcome. Thank you guys for joining. Make sure you guys get the recipe. You guys email me with any questions or anything else that you need or if you can think of, um, just let me know. I'll definitely give feedback. I'll give out recipes, order. Can I get that cheesecake? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. Sure. <laughs> He'll make anything with peanut butter. <laughs> oh my gosh everything with peanut butter <laughs> my my uh my, my son loves peanut butter so it's been i had to do these pb and j empanadas last week and i was just like i am so over peanut butter right now <laughs> he loves peanut butter so it's everything with peanut butter peanut butter ice cream i was like okay i'm, I'm over peanut butter right now but i i normally i would love it uh but i'm i am so so over it he loves that uh, the Reese's Pieces, uh, the Reese's 
the cake I gave you, Aaron. Yeah. He loves that one. That's his favorite one. And I'm over it. Anything else? If not, definitely thank you guys uh, for joining. And I'll definitely be baking soon. I know some of the managers and chairs have reached out to me for like welcome back orders that can be done individually. So you guys may be seeing some things in the office, in your individual offices that are there. Other than that. Thank you so much. Oh, no, I really appreciate welcome. you. And I'll let you know how it turns out. Definitely. I was just going to say, definitely. Send me pictures. Let me know how I it will. Turns out. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye, Dennis. Thank See you tomorrow. You See you tomorrow. Cool. Hey, Dennis, um, I already got a call from our <laughs> 3 o'clock presenter. Are you good if I hop off? Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Uh, I'm going to, you want me to stop the recording? Yep. Yeah. Perfect.